If the civil service exam is on your horizon, chances are you have some questions. What exactly is the civil service exam, and why do I have to take it? What sort of questions are on the test, and how should I study for it? Peterson's has these answers and more. For over 50 years, we've been providing career guidance and test prep resources that help you achieve your academic and professional goals. In this video, we'll go over what to expect on the civil service exam and take you through a practice problem. First off, some facts. The federal government is the nation's largest employer with more than 2.7 million civilian workers in the United States and thousands more overseas. These employees must pass a civil service exam or an eligibility test to gain employment in specific government agencies. These could be postal workers, CIA or FBI agents, air traffic controllers, or clerical workers, just to name a few. These jobs are typically classified as non-military and non-political, meaning civil service does not include judicial branches of the government. The civil service exam is the first step in the hiring process. As for the test itself, its exact content may depend on the civil service job for which you're applying. It's scored on a scale of 100, with 70 as the usual passing grade. The exam contains general sections on the following. Verbal ability, mainly reading comprehension, grammar and spelling, clerical skills such as filing, stenography and coding, and mathematics, specifically basic algebra, geometry, and reasoning. Mathematical reasoning. Before you panic, let's take a look at an example test question. Three employees can do a job in 12 days. Two of them work twice as fast as the third. How long would it take for one of the faster workers to do the job himself? This is an example of a work problem a common type of mathematical reasoning question on the civil service exam. The first step in solving these problems is to identify them. You'll know it's a work problem by spotting the three variables involved, the number of people working, the time it takes to complete the job expressed in minutes, hours, or days, and the amount of work done. You'll be asked to either find the rate, time, or number of workers based on the data provided. When you recognize these three variables, you'll know it's a work problem. The rate at which a person works is the amount of work he or she can do in a unit of time. If all the workers work at equal rates to complete a job, it's easy to find out how long it will take any number of workers to finish the job. However, in some problems, the rates even if they are unequal, can be equalized by comparison. In these problems, you'll need to represent one rate as a fraction or multiple of another. To find the answer, follow these three steps. One, determine from the facts how many equal rates there are. In this case, there are two fast workers and one slow worker so there are actually five slow workers at equal rates. Two, multiply the number of equal rates by the given time. So one slow worker will take 12 days. 12 times five, five being the number of slow workers, equals 60, or 60 days to complete the job. Three, Divide this time by the number of equal rates. So, one fast worker equals two slow workers. Therefore, if we take 60 and divide it by two, we get 30, 30 days to complete the job. Reasoning problems may look intimidating, but with some careful thought and observation and a whole lot of practice, you'll be just fine. Ready for more practice for your civil service exam? Head to petersons.com to start preparing today.